Chapter six starts off with, we then as workers together with him, him being in reference to Christ. It is this thought of fellowship with Christ that kind of is maintained throughout the entire chapter of, 16, or of chapter six, and it's in chapter five as well. Uh, those thoughts are, they say with you. Um, it's, you can only properly view this question of what, what fellowship does righteousness have with unrighteousness in view of your alignment with Christ as being a worker together with him. Uh, Sister Michelle stated Friday evening that these, many of these questions that we've been asking this weekend have a simple yes or no answer. And, and this one is really no different. The proper and obvious response is they have no fellowship with one another. So then what is it that we do as a response? As, I mean, I'm not talking about as a verbal response. I'm talking about as how we live, how our testimony and our witness is maintained as a response. When you answer the questions we've gone through this weekend, you're answering not only through your understanding of the question, but in the experience with the question at hand. For instance, when we say that righteousness and unrighteousness have no fellowship with one another, is because we have been found to be, um, we have found that in our daily taking up of the armor of God and keeping it on at all times, that something that is righteous cannot be used in war in, in accordance with something that's unrighteous. We have protected ourselves from the wiles of the devil with this armor on, because we know that there is no mixing the, of the things of God with the things of the flesh. We also know that even with our armor on, on the, in the end, it will only take one simple word to fell Satan and his, and his hosts. Yeah. We fight while wearing the armor of God because we desire to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Yeah. We know that when we get to be in the presence of the Lord, where unrighteousness is no more, we will no longer have to wear those garments of battle. In 1 Corinthians 15, the Apostle Paul gives us some thoughts on this. He says, This corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. If it is true that righteousness and unrighteousness have no fellowship with one another, which of course is true, then an exchange must come, and we must live desiring the things of the Lord in order to attain this exchange of garments. Amen. And one final thought, brethren, is that because... These have no fellowship with one another. We crucify the flesh in any way we can. Amen. And whenever the flesh rears its ugly, ugly head. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes this means putting away some sin that is within yourself. And when faced with temptation, you just keep saying no. Other times you're in an environment or around people where there is of no profit to you spiritually. In fact, it actually hinders you or actually takes away from you. Amen. In fact, it's these times which are the most detrimental to you. The fact, that part, the, the fact that carnal people cannot and will not and do not crucify their flesh makes it so much easier for your flesh to win. Yeah. Yeah. There are some circumstances you can control, we understand that, and there are some, again, we understand that you cannot control those circumstances. The vast majority of jobs, which, I mean, most of us know this, well, we all know this, the majority of jobs are places where there are just simply a lot of carnal people. We must work in order to live and survive while in this world. Yeah. So we must forbear with working in that type of environment. But we don't put ourselves in a situation where we're willingly with them. Mm -hmm. and, like we don't spend time with them outside of work because we know that this will, this will hinder us in some way. Yeah. I mean, it's not because we absolutely abhor them. It's like we don't, we, we don't like you at all. It's because we know that we're going to be the ones that are going to be hurt in this in the end. Amen. Now, I've heard this type of... of uh, I've heard doing this type of thing being justified by saying, well, you know, we're all children of God. We're all created by God. You know, well, we're all one and the same. We're all humans. Well, bleach and ammonia are both cleaning agents. They're both great for cleaning, but they should not be mixed together. It is something that, instead of creating something more useful, something that is profitable, is actually very deadly. It is difficult at first, but, these, but there are certain friendships and certain communications that must be cut off altogether. I have found that I'm sure many of you have found that after having cut them off, if you show into them again in the, sometime in the future, you'll find that it's actually painful to be around them. Yeah. So brethren, the best way we can answer this question, as far as how we react to this question, how we respond um, within our testimony, is that we prove all things, hold fast that which is good, and abstain from all appearance of evil. Amen.